live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, Veeam, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's live coverage at Cisco Live 2018 in Europe. I'm Jeff Hardy, co-host of theCUBE with my partner in crime this week, Stu Miniman, analyst at Wikimon.com, also co-host of theCUBE at all the events we go to, most of the events, I should say. Our next guest is Ashutosh Melangakar, who's the uh, principal engineer at Cisco DevNet, uh, involved in a lot of the great projects, the sandbox we're going to talk about. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you for having me, Jeff. Thanks for coming on. One of the exciting stories here is the DevNet momentum continues. Um, congratulations to your team. Thank you. But you're involved in a couple cool parts of the projects that we noticed was, was getting a lot of traction. Yes. Co-create, a sandbox. First, take a minute to talk about what that project is sure. and why is it so popular. Yeah, so as you know, like, you know, DevNet is like becoming like the key core for Cisco. And one of the things that we did in DevNet is like it's a strategic initiative uh, where we said that we are going to call it co-creations. And what that means is we are co-creating with Cisco's strategic partners, uh, that's one. Uh, the second is that we are creating, uh, taking our top customers, like you know, our top 10 customers, our top 100 customers, our partners, and our developers. So we are looking at each of these three categories and saying how can we actually help and uh, like take that to the next level with, with DevNet. So you're sharing a lot of resource. Is it the same project? Do they people bring their own project to the table? How does it work? Yes, yeah, so, so it's both. So for example, I'll talk about, first let's talk about strategic initiatives, where a strategic partner, sorry. And uh, in there, like we have Apple and Google as our strategic partners. With Apple, what we have done is we have actually created a fast lane validation program. Uh, and what that does is with, uh, with, uh, with Fastlane as, as a product, what we are doing is any, any app developer who wants to use application uh, quality of service, we actually help them validate their application in DevNet. And one of the things that we noticed is like, you know, app developers really don't understand quality of service, QoS. <laughs> and as soon as we say quality of service, they freak out, right? Yeah, yeah. And so we have to actually handhold them, uh, let them understand what it means, and then we actually help them uh, take their application yeah. on, on the path. I mean, there's a lot of things in networks that are like that. Deep packet inspection, people freak out, and QoS, but QoS is a very important feature. It is. Big time. It is, and that's one thing that we are basically saying, how can network be uh, the platform where you can use performance as a building block? Uh, so, and if you heard Susie in her keynote, you know, that's what she was stressing on, right? Uh, we want to have that as a building block for developers. Yeah, uh, really interesting points. We've been, one of the things we've been digging in the last few days is kind of the changing partner ecosystem. There's some partners that have been with Cisco for you know, decades, networking, infrastructure, but you know, Apple, not a traditional you know, Cisco partner. The other one that you, you mentioned, Google. I did, uh, yeah. So I believe Google's here doing some presentations. John and I have been digging into all the CNCF projects, so yeah, we'll, what's so Google doing here? Yeah, so with yeah. Google, what, what we have, Cisco has done is we are coming up with our hybrid or multi-cloud strategy. And in the hybrid cloud strategy, what we are doing is there are uh, things where, like if, I have, if I'm an app developer, on-prem app developer, and I want to access services which are in the cloud. Now, what the partnership does is we have our security services all the way from on-prem to the cloud, deployed in the, G, the Google Cloud system. And as an app developer, I can do my services on-prem but access some services which are in the cloud. So that's one application. Second is that if I'm an app developer working already in the cloud, but I want to access some of the services which are on-prem, then how do I do it? And that's what this partnership is also helping out. Great, H how's the reaction been of the, of the Cisco Live audience here? How many people are you know, lining up to come listen to Google talk about STO? Yeah, so STO is, is one part, uh, but Kubernetes, like if you look at our sandbox, uh, like we have, like it's becoming one of our most popular sandbox uh, in DevNet, uh, and Kubernetes is like is hot, and with with the Google partnership, uh, we are also working with Google on STO. Uh, it's an open source project, and what we have done is we have created a sandbox for STO, uh, and uh, that is also like you know it's kind of an industry first 
where like developers are able to understand like uh, go through a learning lab to actually understand what what it means yeah absolutely it, you know John and I were at, at the KubeCon show we, we interviewed uh, you know Lou from the Cisco team uh, heavily involvement in the open source but yeah one of those things how do we simplify it how do we help people get the on-ramp sandbox is a great way for people to get started that's correct that's one correct. of the things that we're excited about and this is something that we're going to be doing digging into all year is the impact of Kubernetes, and the sandboxing points to the trend of how people are partnering. I think you guys struck a really interesting form of this co-creation model, because if you look at what service meshes are doing in markets, is that the more that you can make it easier for developers, and at the same time enabling the engineering side of it, getting down and dirty. We're talking about QoS, we're talking about plumbing stuff, right? We're All talking right. about, you know, there's still a lot of automation being done under the hood. Okay, this is the network opportunity, this is where we're seeing you know, automation around provisioning and configuration management, all that good stuff. That needs to get done, but it has to be addressable for true programmability. We're not there yet, but That's we're almost there. We're getting there, yes. What's your reaction to that? A 19 year veteran at Cisco, you know, Cisco has an inherent advantage having the network, so looking up, that's been an enabling, but now you have people who want to look down and program into you. Kind of a new dynamic. It is, it is. How are you guys looking at this? So, so the way I, I look at it, as, as you said, right, and I've seen uh, Cisco grow. I mean, I've grown up in the company, <laughs> uh, and one of the things that, like, Cisco being the expert in networking, we, are, we have experts now which are getting to, like, doing everything, right? In the sense, like, now, like, the edge, is where, where a lot of stuff is happening. So, and when you deploy edge services, you also need uh, stuff that needs to be done in the cloud. Uh, so for example, like, you know, one of the examples like I like to do is, give you is, uh, like let's take uh, machine learning as a, as a good example, where I want to download some models, machine learning models onto the edge, but the traffic is actually all at, at, at the edge. So I'm taking all the inputs from the edge, taking, at the edge, calculating things, and then the models are being built in the cloud uh, because I can't build those at, at the edge. So that's the thing that is happening now. Yeah. And we are ready, we, what we see here is that Cisco is in, that, in the midst of both edge yeah. as well as cloud. And IoT is going to be very instrumental. I mean, I, if, you talk about the, if you talk to the pure networking nerds and geeks out there, they're going to say, Edge, we've been doing edge of the network for years, but now the edge is extending, right? It is. To IoT. Correct. So it's not a new concept to Cisco at all, is it? It's not, it's not at all new at all. Because, like, as I said, like, you know, something very similar to what we are doing for the Apple Fastlane, as I told you before, like, now the app developer has uh, the ability to uh, give QoS right at the app level, right? Yeah. The same thing, like, with, with IoT, uh, it's like all the devices are connected yep. to Cisco, right? Yeah. And this is what's going to be done, it's fun to watch because you guys now have compute to throw at the edge. Correct. You have cloud that you can connect to the edge, but this is going to change the nature of programming. Stateful and stateless applications become a really interesting dynamic. What's your reaction to that trend of as developers start to really start thinking about state? Sure, so, so one of the things uh, that like Again, I go back to the edge uh, thing where like, you know, if you have a train, uh, like if you have a tunnel and then there are cars passing by, uh, you are actually like looking at uh, the cars as let's say a stream of dots, right? Now that state, you cannot be like st giving and storing it somewhere. So you basically keep it at the edge, you figure out what's happening, compute, and take, take some actions there itself, right? That's where the action is. Ashutosh, thank you for coming on theCUBE and sharing your knowledge, appreciate it. And congratulations on the co-creation, fast lane service you guys have, among other things. The collaboration model is the future. Cisco's really demonstrating that in the DevNet zone, so props to the team. It's theCUBE, we, we always collaborate, sharing the best content here live in Barcelona with you. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. More live coverage, day two of our two days wall-to-wall -wall live coverage of Cisco Live 2018 in Europe. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with more after this short break. Oh,